Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a wooden survival treehouse. In Minecraft, I do hope that you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you do, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you're new around here, and click that little bell next to the subscription button to ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. But without any further ado, Let's get started. So just before we start building everybody, here are all of the materials that we are going to be using to make our treehouse. Please do make sure that you have access to all those materials and enough of them as well. The amount of space required to make the treehouse is an 8x8 eight eight block area as represented by that little white concrete grid on the ground. Feel free to make the grid if you like. And that's it. Pause the video if you have to, gather all that stuff, make sure you've got enough room to make it, make sure you're ready, and once you are, we can begin. Step 1 my treehouse building friends, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your grid, if you've made it. Count to the right by 1, 2, and then inwards by 1. Place an oak on the ground. Right of that oak, I want to place a door. But, I don't want to have to destroy it later, so I'm going to destroy the block in the ground, place an oak plank, and then a door on top. Then, place another oak wood right of the door. An oak wood going right and backwards. Go back by two. An oak wood left and backwards. Left by two. Place an oak wood front and left. And then forwards by two, to give you this shape. I now want you to raise up all of those oak woods by 15. You can adjust the number here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You are more than welcome to adjust the number that you want to raise the tree trunk up by. This is what I would call the minimum amount of space. I wouldn't make it any less than this because then the treehouse would lose its appeal. You wouldn't be able to get all of the cool necessary detail that you would probably want in the treehouse on the treehouse unless you had a canvas that was about as big as the one that we are giving it now. But you can make it higher, I just wouldn't make it smaller. Those are my recommendations ladies and gentlemen so do feel free to make it as high as you like and I will show you that you can make it as high as you like when we get to the point that would be affected by height. You'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. So this is what the treehouse will look like once we have given it a trunk. Now we have to make the actual house part of the treehouse. It's not as hard as you might think. We take the upper right oak wood that we have on the front of the treehouse, which is just right here basically, and we want to place four birch plank on top of it. One, two, three, four. We want to go left by four. One, two, three, four. And we want to go in one, and then left by three. One, two, three. We're going to go down two. One, two. And then we're going to kind of copy the shape that we have above us. So we'll go right by three, in one, and then we'll connect right. So that's the sort of shape that we're looking for. And you can just fill the middle of this in using birch planks if you so choose. We'll add detail to that later. What's funny is though, we actually want to create the same shape that we have there on this side. So you can take the top block that we have here and you can extend it inwards by one. And then right by three. One, two, three, and then down by two, one, two, and then you can join it back on itself. So you might not realize just yet, but we will have created uh, quite a symmetrical shape. We want to extend the sides of the treehouse backwards, and it's not even by much. It's, it's by about five rows. So we take each end of the sides and we extend backwards one, two, three, four, five. And that means the entire side. So not just one row, one, two, three, four, five, but that means the entirety of it, just like this. So we'll end up with a shape that should look very much like this. And we want to take all of these rows and we want to extend them inwards by three rows. One, 
two, three. And the same on the other side. One, two, three. You extend that third row outwards towards you. And then you join it together in the middle. So we have a very equivalent shape. It kind of looks like, like a ring or something from the top. Or maybe like, I don't know, the Chevrolet logo or something. But that is what we want to have so far. We do want to give it a bottom though. So to give it a bottom, we're going to take basically this row of birch planks that we have just set underneath. We want to have that row of birch planks extend around and underneath the entire treehouse shape. So you will have seen what I'm talking about. It will be very, very apparent once uh, we've done this. We had that one row of birch planks that was kind of just like sticking underneath. And we just want to have something which should end up looking a little something like that. So it's a little bit blockier, but that is pretty much most of the treehouse. We want to give this thing a roof. So to give it a roof, it's actually relatively simple. We're going to use oak slabs for the most part. We want to have one roof that extends throughout the entire middle of the build like this. We want to place oak wood slabs on the upper left sides of the middle block of the build. We want to extend the oakwood slabs towards us, and then inwards and upwards. Eventually, the inwards and upwards motion will join everything together at an apex. You want to place a birchwood plank inside of the empty space at the top middle of the build. On the back of the build, we want to do the same, so we're going to do the same pattern here. We may also benefit from only doing the outline of the roof. So make sure that you do that on the front and the back. The sides are a little bit different. So when it actually comes to the sides, uh, I think that we are going to have to shave off a block. And what I mean by that is, on the side corners here, you want to knock off the entire row here on the left and right side. So we want to shape things a little bit. And now that we've shaved off those two rows, ladies and gentlemen, what you can do is you can replace them with oakwood planks, make sure that the oakwood planks stick outwards from the front and the back, place oakwood slabs on the sides of the planks like this, so the planks are sticking outwards, and then you want to extend the uh, slab or the planks from the top inwards and upwards, inwards, upwards, just like this. So it will kind of connect in this sort of position here. And we want to do the same thing on the opposite side. So we have like a row of planks, we place the oak wood slabs hanging off the side, and then we extend the slabs like forwards, and then like inwards, upwards, inwards, upwards, like that. So you can leave it like that, or you can kind of like try and meld it into the other roof, kind of like this. And we're gonna do the same thing on the back. And I want you guys to bear in mind that this is just the edge of the roof. And there's a reason that we've only just done the edge of the roof and we've not connected it front to back. You see, we now want to kind of do something that is a little bit tricky. We want it to look as though the top of the tree pokes out of the top of the roof. So the way that I'm going to do this is behind this sticking up birch plank here, I'm going to place an oak wood behind it, extend it left and right, and I'm going to create the same base shape that we have for the tree trunk. So I'm going to extend the oak woods outwards diagonally coming towards the back. I'm going to then extend them towards us by two on both sides. And then I want to join them together in the middle. So you can see we're kind of creating this shape. We can then add another row or so on top of the oak wood, like this, and that is perfect. It doesn't have to line up at all with the tree blowers, because as you guys know, trees are random. They don't usually just build straight up anyway. And what that will then allow us to do is join all of the slabs and all of the oak planks and whatever. It'll allow us to join it all to the middle of the tree, like this. So. We're going to do that, front to back, just like this. And we just want to join it to the middle of the tree. Now, 
the leaves may get in the way a little bit when we start doing them, but we'll see. But it actually looks quite good. Oh, we just missed a little bit there, didn't we? It might be worth having a look uh, from above, actually. There we go. Okay. So everything is now connected together. That's perfect. I want to do the leaves of the tree now. So the leaves of the tree are very random. There's actually not really that much of a method to do them. There's not any counting that you can do that's going to help you do what I'm doing. So basically, all you got to do is with your oak leaves... I know that these don't look like oak leaves, but they are. <laughs> these oak leaves... We want to create a very natural looking shape at the top of our tree. I, I've done this many times, I've made many tree tops, I, I've made many tree houses. The method for making them is always the same. First, you begin by making a shape, a base shape out of the tree. And by the way, it's very acceptable to destroy parts of the roof where you feel as though necessary to uh, kind of like blend the tree into it, like the leaves. It's very, very uh, possible, and it might even look a little bit better if you do kind of like blend the tree in by destroying a couple of slabs here and there. You know you don't have to destroy the whole thing or anything, but it, um, it will look a little bit better if it looks like it's integrated into the actual roof. So wherever I can, I am just going to kind of like um, push the limit with uh, the leaf usage and kind of like blend it in a bit. So kind of like that. But you want to create a shape, and believe it or not, I'm actually doing that myself right now. The shape is pretty simple. It's going to be kind of like an oval. So we don't even have to have that big of a leaf area to the tree. You know, we don't need that big of a top to the tree. But what is important is that it does look natural. So if you start off with a shape similar to this one, Kind of like an oval shape like this. And it can develop, it can start off as one shape and it can completely meld and mold into another. So let's say you start off with this sort of shape, guys, which is, you know, a very tree looking shape, really. And you just want to add layers to it once you have that shape. The layers are basically, you just place in front and inwards in relation to the outer shape that we've just made. You just want to place rows of leaves so kind of like that you see that we've extended it one row forwards really and we want to do the same again so we're going to add like a row of leaves and eventually it will kind of get to the point where you can't add any more without it looking uh without it like really deteriorating meaning like at a certain point like you won't have that many leaves that you can kind of like extend the middles out of so to speak and you'll kind of just end up with something that might look a little bit like that. So it might be bushier, it might not be as bushy as that. You know, you've kind of got to um, temper these things yourself. But this leaf pattern also wants to, of course, extend towards the back of the build. So once you've kind of like established that shape, the outer shape at the very least, you can extend it backwards and all of it, the whole way, way backwards, the outline. And then you do the same sort of thing that you did on the front. It's almost always going to be impossible to emulate what you did on the front. Or at least what I should say is it's almost going to be impossible to copy what you did on the front. It is possible to emulate it, however. Emulate meaning do something similar. Try and do what you did on the front to the back. That's what we're doing here. This is the hardest part of the tree because it's the most random. I could have made a preset kind of pattern of leaves to give you, but it wouldn't look right. Like, you, the, the only way to make the leaves look normal, to make them look natural, I shouldn't use normal, to make them look natural, is really to just keep using the layering method. The layering method is by far the best way to do it. So, we kind of have an outer shape, and I kind of am building these layers in here. What I've pretty much done by accident, really, is I've filled in the center of the tree. That's something that you're going to want to avoid. You don't have to fill in anything, like, all in one go. Because, as I did mention, although it's not a bad thing, because it does add uh, extra color to the back. But what we are more so looking to do is, again, layers. You don't have to completely fill anything in. Only the parts that you really, really need to. So, kind of like that, right? That's not looking too bad. 
Um, to make it look a tad more natural, perhaps we'll have um, some parts like hanging over the sides here, kind of like this, like that. That's looking pretty good. That's not looking too bad. And we might even want uh, something that looks a little bit less flat here as well. So like here. So like that. And then like this. That's not looking too bad, right? That looks good. So those leaves don't look too bad at all. You might personally want to have leaves uh, hang over the front more, or over the sides. I'm quite content with having, um, it kind of just looks like an afro of some sort. It just looks like a big bushy set of hair just on top of our treehouse, which is fine by me. Now that we have that, we are going to add a little bit more detail to the house and kind of work our way down a little bit. The house wants to have a little balcony on the front. The balcony is made by placing birchwood planks around the outside of the front of the bottom of the house in this sort of manner. We want to add another row in front like this, kind of shaving one block off of each side. And then we want to place oak wood slabs going all the way around. It doesn't have to be a large balcony. The house isn't huge, so we do not want to really make a massive balcony that looks out of place. The front of the house has an entrance. The entrance is here on the right side, leaving a gap of one from the wall. The door will be placed here, and left of the door, leaving a gap of one, we will have a glass pane. In addition to this, we will have a window here on the left side, and a window here on the right side, like this. And we want to have the same thing on the back. So the back, minus, by the way, minus the door, we want to have windows in the same places. And then another window just on the back. And you can even shape the back a little bit more. Like you can knock off a row here at the back. And also perhaps like here. And here. Because it shapes it a little bit more. It looks a little bit more interesting than it would have done otherwise. So that's how the house is laid out. And you'll actually find, funnily enough, it's ready to decorate the inside of the house. You might want to perhaps clean it up a little bit. You know, you might want to get rid of the look of the uh, the trunk. You know, maybe fill it in using some oak slabs or what have you. But it is pretty much ready to fill in. Uh, in addition to this, now that we have the house, we have to find a way to get up to the house. There's two options here, and I'm going to show you. So I'm just going to get rid of what don't I need? The doors. And I'm going to grab ladders. One method of getting up inside the house is to have a row of ladders that extends all the way up the middle of the house and eventually um, you pop up into the center of the house. That is one method. You have a row of ladders that takes you there, which is cool. But I like multiple options. So that is one set of options. You can go right up the middle or you can create a staircase. This is my favorite option because it's very decorative. So the staircase will start on the right side of the tree here, it, like level with the row of free oak wood. We're going to place extending backwards oak wood slabs extending up and back, just like this. As we go along the left, uh, along the flat sides of the tree, we will go like back up, back up, back up. But once we reach the corners, we will flatten it out. And then once we reach the sides, we will do the ascending again. So like up, back, back, up, back, up, back, up. And then we take to the corners, and then that's flat. And then back up, back up, back up, back up, so on and so forth. So um, the sides are flat, or rather the corners are flat, and the sides are where we go up. And if you follow that, it's actually very, very, very simple. So it's a very, very simple thing to do. And eventually, once we hit the point where we are on the front side of the tree again, here, right where the middle is, so we'll probably actually leave it like, yeah, have it like that, right where the middle is, once we've done an entire rotation around the tree. Oh no, this is a side, silly me. And then, hang on, let's, let's get to the... <laughs> my bad. So, once we're on the front side of the tree again, here we go. <laughs> I got confused there. So now that we're on the front side of the tree again, I want to place a row of ladders leading up and breaking into the... There we go, breaking into the platform. So we have two methods here. 
And um, that's all I wanted. I just wanted two methods that we were able to get up and down the tree. In addition to this, we're going to add kind of like a, a staircase, sort of around the staircase, like um, some structure around the staircase. We're going to use some uh, birch planks for this. Um, just to kind of like around the bottom part of the staircase. I just want to make it my bad. Um, so I just want to make it so that that's fine. So there and then there. I just want to make it so that the birch planks are kind of like just resting in the crooks. There we go. Of uh, of the staircase like this. I mean, it can even um, keep going round like that a little bit. Um, but I actually kind of like it just... Uh, yeah, probably about there would be just fine. Um, I actually stopped here, I think, on the original version. So right about here. And then I join it down to the ground using a bit of birch fence. And it just looks a little bit better. So just for the bottom part, it just looks as though it's a little bit more supported than, uh, than it would be otherwise. Uh, I just think that it makes it look a little bit better. You could continue it going all the way up the side of the tree, but uh, I'm not. The entrance wants to look a little bit fancier too. Um, we are going to place using some birchwood slab. We're going to start in line with the top of the entrance on the sides of the tree. We're going to have birchwood slabs here extending outwards. Actually, it's going to be one row above because we want to be able to place... Um, we want to be able to place some fence underneath it. So half a row above the actual entrance. We want to extend the birchwood slabs outwards. And then like in and up and in like that. So towards the center like so. And then the corners we can extend down using some birch fence. And it'll actually look quite good like this. Yeah, there we go. That's looking pretty decent. You can add detail to the tree on the boring part. So, like, wherever you don't have, like, a load of things going on, like, on the upper right side of the tree, you can add, like, little branches and stuff um, using oak wood and, of course, your leaves. You can make some branches. So, however you feel as though that you might want to do that, you don't have to add these if you don't want to. I, uh, I happen to think that they look uh, kind of cool, so, like, here... And then on the left side, I mean, you've not really got, like, a, a massive gap, but, like, you could have, like, a gap just underneath here, just so that we're not kind of copycatting off of there. So, like, just underneath here, maybe we have, like, a bit of a branch. And you, you of course, you don't want to place these wherever um, you would interfere with your way of getting up, too. So, kind of like that. It doesn't look too bad, does it? That's, that's looking pretty good. I'd also add a window to the center of the tree. So on the front of the tree house, where we have the space between this walkway and this walkway, I kind of just want to place two glass pane right in the center, just like this, because I think that it just looks really, really cool like that. I really, really like that, ladies and gentlemen. Once you've done that, Believe it or not, you have actually 100% fully completed your treehouse. Nicely done. So this is what your treehouse will look like once it has been 100% fully completed, ladies and gentlemen. We have the trunk of our tree. We can get up and down using two different methods. We have the house itself made, and we have all of the leaves applied to the top. And you might also notice that I added a little bit of grass path down there at the base of the treehouse just to make it look a little bit better. Now, if you want some tips on how you might decorate the inside of your treehouse, I can show you the original version. In the original version, I used the base of the treehouse as a quick storage slash smelting area. I've still made it look nice and approachable, and it's kind of colourful down here. We have a little bit of everything that we might need. As we work our way up to the top of the treehouse, we have to climb of course, then you'll notice that up at the top here, we have a survival themed interior that kind of has a little bit of everything that we might possibly need in survival. Pretty much everything. So if you kind of want to achieve the same sort of effect, maybe you can take a little bit of inspiration for what we have here. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the little bell next to the subscription button, and that'll ensure that you get all of my videos sent directly to your sub box. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate all of you very, very much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye!